What's going on and welcome to the Solo Shot. My name is Tom Vecchio. We have a 12-game MLB slate tonight. Lock is set for 7.05. As always, this is one of the many shows on the FanDuel Podcast Network. You can find that anywhere, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's Spotify, you name it. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. Leave a review. That'd be greatly appreciated. And you can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Of course, the video version can be found on the FanDuel YouTube page. It can be found on FanDuel TV+. Plus. And it can be found on FanDuel.com slash watch. Before we hop into things, snap into NFL action this season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, or Virginia. Call 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. 1 888 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. Call 1 800 9 with it if you're in Indiana. Call 1 800 522 4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas. In Louisiana, call 1 877 770 STOP. Visit gambling helpline. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. Visit 1 800 gambler.net in West Virginia or call 1 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gambling helpline ma.org or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts. Call 1 877 8 Hope NY or text Hope NY in New York. All right, let's get to today's 12-game MLB slate. Lock is set for 7.05. We have a lot to get to in, term, in terms of uh, just the amount of pitchers that we have, the amount of high-quality pitchers. When it comes to weather on tonight's slate, we're looking pretty clear. Uh, in Chicago for the Cubs, they're at home hosting the Pittsburgh Pirates. It's a little bit cooler, but there's some wind blowing from right to left. Uh, and then in Kansas City, there's about wind 10 to 15 miles per hour blowing out towards left field, which is obviously a nice boost for hitters. Other than that, we are clean when it comes to weather. Let's jump right into pitching. It is loaded, as I said, up at the top. Uh, Spencer Strider, 11.5. Blake Snell, 11.3. Luis Castillo, 10.9. Zach Gallen, 10.6. Nathan Eovaldi, 10.1. Ryan Pepio, 9.9. Yusei Kikuchi, 9.7. Hunter Brown, 9.5. Logan Allen, 9.3. There are a number of options on tonight's slate. Again, we do not have Coors Field on tonight's slate as well. But really, these top four pitchers that are all 10.6 and above are the ones we want to be targeting. Nathan Evaldi is 10.1, and I have basically no interest when it comes to him. As I mentioned last week, uh, when he was going up against the Blue Jays, he's on some type of a pitch count innings limit, whatever it might be, since he's made his return off the IL. He's made three starts since returning off the IL, 1.1, 2.1, and 3.1 innings pitched. If things hold true, I guess he'll be going for about four innings tonight, and he's 10.1, which means we have no interest in going to Eovaldi. Spencer Strider, Blake Snell, Luis Castillo, and Zach Gallen are all elite options tonight, and three out of the four of them have great matchups. Strider certainly has a tougher matchup going up against Philadelphia, given their offense, but Strider, we can make the claim, is the best pitcher on tonight's slate. When it comes to Spencer Strider, he has a ridiculous 37.6% strikeout rate, 7.8% walk rate, only allowing 1.07 home runs per nine. He has a 2.82 skill interactive ERA, Sierra. That is very, very low. He also comes with a 57 medium contact rate, 45.4% a percent fly ball rate, which we don't love to see, but it's mostly medium contact. He has an absolutely insane 19.3 swinging strike rate. We know that Strider is capable of racking up the strikeouts early and often going for as many strikeouts as you could possibly imagine. He's going up against Philadelphia. They come in with a 23.4% striker rate with their current active roster versus right-handed pitching, which is the 12th worst in the league. But Philly also comes in with a 106 WRC plus in this same split which is the 12th best in the league. And they come in with a team ISO sitting at 175 in this split, 
which oddly enough is the 13th best in the league. So they're a above league average offense versus righties. There's no doubt about that. Strider is a better pitcher than they have compared to their lineup, but still there's a bit of danger in that lineup as we saw last night. This is not to say that I don't like Strider. I think he is absolutely SP1 on tonight's slate, but there's, of course, an argument to be made about Blake Snell, Luis Castillo, and even Zach Gallon tonight. I think it would really come down to Strider as one, Snell and Castillo as 2A, 2B, and then Zach Gallon as 3. Snell is is 11.3 and only 200 less expensive compared to Strider. And we obviously want to be focusing in on how popular some of these players are going to be. If Strider is going to be the clear chalk for tonight. It's like Snell makes a very, very clear pivot away from him. And it's not like Snell isn't good. He's, of course, one of the leading candidates for the or the leading candidate for the NL Cy Young this year, coming in with a 30.6, or excuse me, a 31.4% strikeout rate this season. 13.4% walk rate is obviously the thing that's holding Snell back in some of these outings, and 0.81 home runs per nine. So he's allowing runners on for free with that 13% walk rate, which we do not like to see, but he's not getting burnt by it because he's able to limit the home runs, able to you know, keep the ball in, in terms of medium contact and ground balls, as we've seen from him throughout his entire career with a 51.5% medium contact rate, a 43.5% ground ball rate, all this leading to a 4.10 Sierra. There's no doubt that Strider is a better pitcher compared to Blake Snell, but this matchup for Blake Snell is absolutely unbelievable. He's going up against the Colorado Rockies, and with their current active roster versus left-handed pitching, they come in with a 28.3% strikeout rate versus lefties, which is the worst in the league. They also come in with a 59 WRC plus versus lefties, which is dead last in the league. And just to give some context, right now the Cleveland Guardians versus lefties are 29th in the league with an 81 WRC plus. Colorado is 30th at 59 WRC plus. There is a substantial drop off for how bad Cleveland is versus lefties, Colorado is borderline historically bad versus lefties. So we have Snell and Strider up at the top. And yes, Strider uh, has more strikeout upside in his own right, in his own in terms of his own pitching skill compared to Blake Snell. But Philly is obviously a, a bit of a more dangerous offense compared to Blake Snell, uh, compared to the matchup that Blake Snell has going up against Colorado, who, again, are borderline historically bad versus lefties. And again, Colorado is striking out at the highest rate versus left-handed pitching right now. So everyone might be looking towards Strider, again, as the chalk option. I think this opens up a, a huge door for Snell to be a great, great pivot tonight. So we want to keep that in mind. We also have Luis Castillo tonight, who is also awesome, and he has an elite matchup going up against the Oakland Athletics. And this is not something that we want to be shying away from. Luis Castillo comes in with a 27.2% striker rate, 6.4% walk rate, allowing 1.29 home runs per nine. And he has a 3.69 skill interactive ear rate. He does not have a high, a, as high of a strikeout rate compared to Snell or Strider. That is very clear. But this matchup against Oakland is awesome. And we could say that this is the best pitcher's park out of this group. Uh, considering he's at Oakland, Atlanta's a good uh, a good hitter's park. San Diego leans towards a pitching park, but it's not as good as Oakland. And, and yeah, so we want to be factoring in as much as we possibly can when it comes to the athletics right now. With their current active roster versus righties, they come in with a 24.8% strikeout rate, which is the fifth worst in the league. They have an 89 WRC plus in this split, which is absolutely not good. It's 25th in the league. And they come in with a 155 team ISO, which of course is not good. And it's 24th in the league. So Castillo is no doubt in an awesome matchup tonight. If Castillo was the top pitcher on tonight's slate, we'd be going to him 10 times out of 10. We just happen to have two other options that are both completely awesome. So this is where we're kind of splitting hairs between some of these pitchers. Like I said, Strider is number one, but Snell and Castillo are 2A and 2B, however you want to rank them. We also have Zach Gallon on tonight's slate. Zach Gallon again, does not have as high of a strikeout rate as these other three pitchers. He's at 25.7%. 5.3% walk rate is great to see, only 0.98 home runs per nine. He has a 3.70 skill interactive ERA, which is awesome. He's always limiting the uh, hard contact and the fly balls. He's a mostly medium contact and, and ground ball pitch, which is good to see, a 50.4% medium contact rate and 40.5% ground ball rate. I don't expect him to have as many strikeouts as 
basically any of these other three pitchers. But I certainly do like this matchup going up against San Francisco as we see them struggling versus righties overall, coming with a 23.4% strikeout rate, which is the 11th worst in the league. So there's higher strikeout upside individually with Snell and Strider. There's great strikeout upside from the matchup with Snell. There's great strikeout upside with Castillo, not only individually, but also the matchup against Oakland. But it's not like Zach Gallen isn't a good pitcher and also not in a good matchup. So there's a lot to consider when it comes to these top pitching options. And I think they're all great. And obviously presents, you know, an opportunity to fade the chalk with Strider, go to Snell, go to Castillo, or go to Zach Gallen. And as I said, there's no course field on tonight's slate. So we should certainly be looking to pay up for this high level of high level of consistency. Now, Ryan Pepio is 9,900 going up against Detroit. I assume he'll be somewhat popular just given the matchup that the Tigers are so bad overall, they strike out at a high rate. And he, of course, is a little bit less expensive compared to some of these other options. Uh, not a player, not a pitcher that I'm initially going to if I'm running one or two lineups, but if you're rolling out multiple lineups, Pepio could certainly make his way into the mix. Let's move on to the hitting stacks on tonight's slate. Yes, we have the Braves and we have the Dodgers, of course, two of the mainstays when it comes to stacking. We know the offensive upside that they have. Uh, the matchup tonight for Atlanta is significantly better than what they had last night going up against Zach Wheeler. Tonight, Atlanta's at home. They're going up against Christopher Sanchez for the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, the Braves are now on a four-game losing streak, I believe it is. Uh, you know, this kind of just seems like the spot for them to to kind of turn things around, get their offensive going. And, um, you know, I, I expect them to put up some runs tonight. I don't think that's too much of a surprise. Look to Atlanta for some offense. Look to the Dodgers for some offense. But outside of that, where could we be going? Let's go to the Cleveland Guardians. As I mentioned, there's about 10 to 15 mile power wind blowing out towards left. That is certainly good to see. The Royals are expected to have Steven Cruz on the mound to start the game, whether or not he goes super deep in the game is yet to be seen. He's a right-handed pitcher. We could be seeing Alec Marsh come behind him as the bulk reliever. So it could be a, a couple of innings for Steven Cruz and then some pitching from Alec Marsh. This is the first season for uh, Steven Cruz in the MLB. He has seven innings pitched at the MLB level this year. We really can't take anything from that. It doesn't matter that he has a 12.5% walk rate. He's allowing 1.29 home runs per nine. It's from a seven inning sample size. We really can't take too much of that. We can look to Alec Marsh, who has a 60.1 inning sample size this season, his first year in the, the MLB. He has a 25.4% strikeout rate, which is certainly pretty solid, 11.8% walk rate, which is not, and 2.24 home runs per nine allowed. That is something I think we should be looking to attack, considering he has a 44.6% fly ball rate. If those fly balls are getting in the air tonight, given the fact that there's extra wind blowing out, in Kansas City, that should be a benefit to Cleveland. Now, I mentioned Cleveland are 29th in the league when it comes to facing lefties, but they're actually pretty solid against right-handed pitching, and this is the spot that we want to look to attack. And ultimately, Cleveland, not super expensive when it comes to their salaries. Of course, Jose Ramirez is 3700 That's where his salary should be, and he is, of course, the ideal option when it comes to stacking Cleveland. But other than that, Josh Naylor is 3,300. Andres Jimenez is 3,000. Stephen Kwan is 3,000. We're not dealing with super, super expensive options from Cleveland, which makes them very favorable to stacking, considering there are pitchers that are above 11,000 that we want to pay up for tonight. So, yes, getting Jose Ramirez and Josh Naylor, who both have 190 ISOs, respectively, in this split versus righties, would be the ideal way to go about things. Uh, but if you can't afford... Uh, Jose Ramirez, I get that because we're you know potentially paying up for Snell or Strider at pitching. This is where you look to Bo Naylor at 2,600. This is where you look to Ramon Laureano at 2,600. Again, depending on which of these players are in or out of the lineup. So I would love to get Bo Naylor in there with his 232 ISO versus righties in the split, which is great, at 2,600. Is he my first priority? No, of course not. I want to be getting Jose Ramirez in there. I want to be getting his brother, Josh Naylor, in there. That's where I really want to be going. But again, again, the salary is largely dependent on what we're doing at pitching. Miles Straw, you could certainly mix him in there. Will Brennan, these players don't bring a ton of power upside in their own right, but they are better as a part of a stack. The same thing can be said about Stephen Kwan, a, a player that does not strike out at nearly anything. He strikes out so, so low, which is great to see he gets on base. So we want him as a part of the stack rather than going to 
him individually uh, from the Guardians tonight. Uh, we also should be looking to uh, a number of other teams tonight. I think the Padres are very much in play tonight, as they were last night. We saw a bunch of runs from them last night. I think it was uh, 11, some good home runs. They're going to be going up against Ryan Feltner for the Colorado Rockies. He has been out for quite a while, and he has 35.1 innings pitched this season. He has 97.1 innings pitched last year, so we can look at a decent sample size, whether it's this year or last year. He is not a high strikeout pitcher. He walks too many hitters. He allows too many home runs. And this is his first start back off of the 60-day IL. And this is, yeah, not the easiest matchup to kind of land going up against the Padres. Yeah, they've been inconsistent this year, but they certainly have a ton of power. And I'll be looking to them yet again tonight for that power upside. Same thing as I said last night. You know, we want to get up to Soto, Tatis, Machado, those three players. But, of course, we got some power out of some of the other hitters last night. Xander Bogarts had a big game last night. He's only 3K tonight. You can go to Pro Farm. You can go to any of these other hitters that happen to make their lineup, uh, you know, given the salaries and what you may or may not have, have available. We also should be looking to the Washington Nationals tonight. And I know everyone's not going to be running to get some of the Nationals in your lineups, like they're not an amazing offense overall, but the matchup they have going up against Jose Urena is something that we do not want to be passing up. So we have Cleveland, which I think is in an amazing spot tonight. We have the Dodgers. We have the Braves. We can be stacking those teams each and every time. I think we can be stacking Seattle again tonight. I'm not going to specifically talk about them other than mentioning them here. And I think we can stack the Padres tonight. All these teams are great. I really like the Washington Nationals tonight going up against Jose Urena, who is simply not a good pitcher. He comes in with an 11.6% walk rate, allowing 3.77 home runs per nine. Now, of course, this is from a very small 28.2 inning sample size, and he has a 14.5% walk rate. But if we look back to whether it's last year, whether it's the year before when he's pitching 97 or 102.2 innings, he's allowing over one home run per nine in every year dating back to 2018, when he allowed 0.98 home runs per nine. This is who Jose Urena has been throughout his entire career. He's not a high strikeout pitcher. He's allowing too many home runs, and he walks too many hitters. He's coming in with a 5.81 skill interactive ERA this season, and for his entire career, he has a 4.96 skill interactive ERA. He's allowing too many fly balls. He's allowing too much hard contact this year. It's pretty straightforward for Jose Urena. It's a small sample size this year, but it's really just a small sample size that mirrors largely his entire career, which is not a good pitcher, too many walks, too many home runs, too many fly balls. And this is where the Nationals could come into play, not only because of the matchup, but also due to the fact that their salaries are very friendly, much like the Cleveland Guardians night where C.J. Abrams and Lane Thomas are solid hitters to certainly have as a part of a stack. They are 33 and 3,200 after that. Every other hitter on the Nationals is under 2,700. So this is where we get some serious power. Uh, we get some serious salary relief with a bit of power upside due to their matchup versus Jose Urena. So when we want to pay up for Snell and we want to pay up for Strider, we want to stack the Braves. We want to stack the Dodgers, and all these hitters are super expensive. We need that kind of stack to unlock the rest of the lineup, and the Nationals might be uh, an option tonight. The, the Guardians might be an option tonight because of what they allow the rest of the lineup to do. So we have a number of teams we can stack tonight. We have amazing pitching options on tonight's slate. Let's close things out with some home run calls. Uh, going to be keeping it pretty simple, going with Austin Riley of the Atlanta Braves. Love this matchup for him going up against Christopher Sanchez. Of course, there's a ton of righties in the Braves lineup that could go for home runs going up against the lefty on any single slate, but... I like Riley tonight. Uh, you know, Cooney is always going to be there as an option. Albies, Ozuna, Murphy, they're all great. But I really do like Austin Riley tonight, given the hitting profile versus Christopher Sanchez. We could certainly be looking there each and every time. And then if you want to go to Josh Naylor, I think that is certainly very, very viable for the Cleveland Guardians. Again, a 190 ISO in this split. We should see two righties on the mound for the Royals, whether they're, it's their opener or their reliever coming behind him. I think that's what we're going to be seeing from them. And again, the wind blowing out in Kansas City is always a benefit to the hitters. All right, so that does it for today's podcast. As always, it can be found across the, the FanDuel Podcast Network. It can be found on Spotify. It can be found on Apple Podcasts. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Until next time, good luck in your contests.